Defining slip. Here's a nice fundamental equation you can rip out of your textbooks and hang on your wall. Slip is simply the relationship between how quickly the wheel tire assembly is rotating compared to how fast the car is going. When you put that into equation format, you have the relationship between r omega, which is the angular velocity of the wheel tire, multiplied by the rolling radius of the tire, divided by v, vehicle speed, speed of the center of the wheel, if you will. Take the ratio, subtract it from 1, multiply it by 100, and there you go, percent slip. If we throw some examples up here, excuse me here, if r omega is 4 meters per second, and the vehicle's going along at 5, the ratio is 0.2, 1 minus 0 0.2, 0 0.8 times 100, 80%. We have 20% slip. If, for example, R omega is 2 and V is 5, then our lambda turn is 60%. So we can simply calculate how fast the wheel is spinning relative to the road going by. There are two very special cases we have to pay attention to. The first is if the, excuse me, R omega term equals the V term. If the wheel is spinning along just as fast as the road's going by, there's 0% slip. And as we'll find, it's a very th important concept to understand. At 0% slip, a tire generates zero force. It's a free rolling tire. The opposite end of the spectrum is if the R omega term equals zero. If the wheel is locked and sliding, it is not moving, but the car is still moving along, then we have 100% slip. When people think of a brake skid or locked up brakes, they're talking about 100% slip. The wheel's not turning, but the car's still moving. Two points on the end of this continuum of brake slip. We have here a little animation just to sort of give you a visual, a little wake up here, if you will, as to how that tire physically distorts and stretches to generate the slip. So if we run through the animation, we can see as the driver applies the brake, you see the body pitch reaction. But more importantly, what you want to look at here is what's actually going on at the contact patch right down here, the bulge and stretch at the contact patch. And we'll run through that one more time. If you watch, as the tire slows down relative to the road, it actually distorts and stretches. That's creating slip. The slip, we'll find out, will create a reactive force. But it's the stretching of the carcass of the tire and the tread contact patch of the tire that generates that slip, which will ultimately, maybe, decelerate that vehicle. One more time. Exactly. As you slow the wheel down, the elastokinematic properties of the pneumatic tire, it gets dragged, if you will, along the ground because there's spring in that. There's a little spring that's going into tension as we pull on the sidewall of the tire. It's that stretching and distorting that creates that force. Exactly. We'll see, not in this class, but in the lateral sense, slip angle is the same deal. As we distort the sidewall of the tire laterally, we can generate force as well.